Hello, and thank you for attending. My name is Annabelle Lee, and I will be presenting the recent work done under Dr. Shally Page titled BIR2 is a critical component of innate immunity in C. elegans. In our lab, we use the model organism nematode worms referred to as C. elegans. These worms are microscopic and transparent. They are grown on petri dishes and fed bacteria. Their life cycle includes stages referred to as egg, L1, L2, L3, and L4. The L1s are the infant worms and the L4s are the adults. Their genome is fully annotated and they are cost efficient. They have a short lifespan, fast reproduction rate, and can be frozen, making them easy to grow and maintain. This investigation focused on the gene known as BIR2 found in C. elegans that shares similarity to human immune system genes. Throughout our presentation, we will be using some key terms. The N2 worm is the normal or wild type worm utilized as a control in our experiments. The wild type worms eat the wild type bacteria, OP50. RNAi or gene knockdown is utilized in our lab to inhibit the gene expression of the BIR2 gene in the worms. Therefore, the knockdown worms are referred to as BIR2 worms. The BIR2 worms eat knockdown BIR2 bacteria. The pathogenic bacteria previously mentioned is E. faecalis, which is a digestive pathogen, thus the survival tests we conducted utilize this pathogenic bacteria. This pathogen is also present in humans, but is not toxic unless the individual is immunocompromised. Therefore, it's a good model for looking at the immune system's ability to fight off pathogenic bacteria. Finally, bioinformatics is a field where computer-based tools are used to analyze DNA and RNA. We are interested in a group of proteins involved in inhibiting apoptosis, or programmed cell death. This shows eight protein family members, which all contain BIR protein domains shown in the brown boxes. These proteins are critical for regulating programmed cell death, innate immunity, and tend to be upregulated in cancers. We studied these in C. elegans, which only has two family members. We are focusing on BIR2, whose function is not well established. BIR2 protein domain regions are similar to BIR proteins in humans and yeast. The two that they resemble most closely are NAIP and Survivin. This diagram shows how the knockdown process works. Knockdown, or RNAi, inhibits the gene expression. The mRNA is produced by the cell, and the BIRT2 RNA is inserted into the cell to knock down BIRT2 gene expression. In our research, we attempted to knock down the BIRT2 gene and then observe the effects of the knockdown of BIRT2 on nematodes. Rebecca's experiment had volcano plots produced, which show us what genes are affected by the BIR2 knockdown. Each dot represents the amount of expression of one gene. In the volcano plot here, we see the change of gene expression on the x-axis and the statistical significance on the y-axis. The red dots are more than fourfold change and statistically significant. The plot produces a gap in the middle because the expression of these genes were not significantly changed. The genes affected by BIR2 knockdown and the genes that are affected by the presence of pathogenic bacteria can be seen. Here we see the gene C32H11 labeled here in red, indicating more than an eightfold change in gene expression. This gene is involved in innate immunity. We had over 2,000 genes that had significant changes in gene expression. Of the top five genes, three of them were involved in the immune system. Rebecca has showed that we had a lot of immune system genes that were affected by BIR2 knockdown. For the following experiments, the general hypothesis is BIR2 plays an important role regarding innate immunity and knocking it down will decrease the survival upon immune challenge. Throughout our research, we tracked worm survival without the BIR2 gene and tested the immune system functions of the BIR2 gene by feeding the worms without this gene pathogenic bacteria. To examine the role that BIR2 might play in the immune system, we decided to try and modulate the immune system directly with LPS, which is a piece of bacterial cell wall that triggers the immune system. 
We then tried to modulate the TLR4 pathway with LPS to try and see if the pathway is affected by the BIRD2. Here you can see the LPS in the red circle closest to the top of the screen and the TLR4 in the red circle below it. Lipopolysaccharides, or LPS, were added to the well plate. Two forms of LPS were added. LPSRS, which is an antagonist that inhibits the, L the TLR4 pathway, and the LPS-EV that, that is an agonist that stimulates TLR4 pathway. These were added to all wells, the exception of LPS-EV within EF wells. An experiment that was performed in the lab last year began with wild-type C. elegans that were grown on a 96 well plate, some with the control bacteria and others with the Birchie knockdown. Here is an image of a well from the micro well plate. The initial plate setup for this experiment involved wild type worms that were initially grown in OP50 or BIR2 bacteria. Then each type of wild type worms were tested in a row that contained OP50, BIR2 knockdown, or Efecalis bacteria. The control worms contained OP50 wild type worms within OP50 bacteria showed the high population and mainly normal swimming movements. However, OP50 wild type worms in rows of BIRT2 or Efecalis bacteria showed decreasing the struggle and showed decreasing and struggling reproduction rates and irregular movements such as drastic speed changes and twitches. BIRT2N2s within the OP50 and BIR2 as well as Ife Callus, all showed struggling populations and irregular movements. By the end of day 16, most worms experienced twitching or very slow swimming. Mainly younger stages of N2s were present as well. When the LPSRS was added to both Ife Callus wells and resulted in increasing populations and movements normalizing. LPS-EV was not tested enough for significant data but displayed lower survival rates at the time. In my most recent experiment, the previous experiment had been adjusted slightly. The worms were synchronized with an equal number of worms that were harvested. Then worms were only fed Efecalis upon synchronization. This diagram shows the control wells of the LPSRS. The green box viewed on the left is representative of the untreated sample and the orange box viewed on the right represents the BIR2 knockdown samples. The right panel shows that worm survival when Efe callus is present. In the orange boxes on the right side, we can see that the BIR2 knockdown population decreased when the pathogenic bacteria was added. These show that our data is consistent with our previous experiments showing that BIR2 knockdown reduces resistance of pathogenic bacteria. This graph displays the effects LPS had on BIR2 knockdown. The green boxes are wild type C. elegans and the blue boxes are the BIR2 knockdown. The BIR2 knockdown samples that contained LPS RS survived better while the wild type wells showed little change in their populations. This preliminary data indicates that the antagonizing the innate immunity pathway allows survival of the BIR2 knockdown and supports our hypothesis that BIR2 plays a role in innate immunity. Here's a flowchart from the most recent experiment conducted. At the beginning, OP50 bacteria or wild type bacteria was grown with wild type worms. Upon synchronization through L1 filtering, the worms were then added to separate plates containing either wild type bacteria or BIR2 knockdown bacteria, as well as IPTG, and then one control plate, as well as plates consisting of LPS RS or LPS EB. After a 24 hour incubation period, the plates were washed and then the worms were added to new BHI plates that consisted of Efe Callus. 
When higher concentrations of LPS were present, the largest increase in survival was present. The greatest increase in the LPS EB was with the BIRD2 worms. So we've shown that BIRD2 is involved in regulating innate immunity and protecting against pathogenic bacteria. When we tried to upregulate and downregulate the TLR4 receptor, we saw increased survival either way. Since the nematodes eat bacteria, our results may be explained by LPS acting as an extra food source rather than actually impacting the TLR4 receptor. There are also little differences in the quantity of worm survival and low and medium LPS concentrations. Looking forward, we plan to closely explore and examine downstream gene expression and the effects of apoptosis and oxidative stress. I would like to take a moment to thank Lisa Bamba, Catherine Koning, and Patty Arsenal at Franklin Pierce University, as well as the Hubbard Center for Genome Studies at the University of New Hampshire. Funding was provided by New Hampshire INRI and Franklin Pierce University. Thank you for your assistance throughout. Thank you as well to my research colleagues, graduate Rebecca Halleck and Antonio Rua at Franklin Pierce University. Thank you everyone for attending my presentation. I'd like to open this discussion for some questions.